mentally, verbally in my past two year relationship. So I know a lot of you probably was like wondering what happened, what went on in that two year relationship that caused me to really act besides getting beat up for God to remove this person out of my life before he gradually actually did. So we're going to start off with, okay, I was 18 years old and I used to work and I used to work really hard and I really had no time for relationships or anything other than work <laughs> or my kids which I haven't spent most time with them when I was 18 years old. So it was a time where I was at work one day and I had no relationship. I wasn't in like no type of relations with anybody. I was just a loner. Where basically I preferred to be that way. And so this guy came along and we had met on Facebook. Facebook. And <laughs> And basically, we just exchanged conversation for a couple of days. It took like about three or four days for us to get to know each other. And he lived in a different city, and I lived in a different city, So, and I worked in a different city. So, now, this relationship, the devil sent this gift, gift wrapped as my pain. Okay, there was nothing good in this relationship besides the sex. That is it. That's all. Okay, so when I met this guy for the very first time, the first thing that he could think about was how big my assets were. And I guess he was pleased. So he went in his head and, you know, went further with that. And as me being young, lonely, or a loner, yeah, lonely, and just working a lot, like 12-hour shifts and stuff like that when I was 18 years old, and just, you know, not doing anything that a lot of other girls were doing and spending time with other guys, like other girls were doing at that age and at that time, so I felt like, okay, this was something that I should do. I already take care of of what I was taking care of, which basically, I had my own house um, when I was 18, but my parents were living with me, and they were helping me because I didn't really have it all like I thought I had it all. And so I was, you know, I met him, and we barely talked the first, the first night. The first night, I'm gonna tell you, just like this, we had this something, okay, and it wasn't the best feeling because I really didn't know him but he was making me feel good so I had this feeling of brokenness and um, these daddy issues ever since I was a young girl clearly because I never knew who my real father was and like I said the enemy used that against you so that you will never ever realize anything about yourself other than the stuff that you had missed from your life or things that you don't have in your life because it's God's will and it's his purpose literally everything that is done is done on purpose because like I said in heaven this is God's kingdom and in earth this is God's kingdom so whatever he feels right and best oh it's gonna be done so back to the story where me and this guy I guess he picked me up downtown and we were riding, it wasn't even his car he picked me up in. It was his friend's car. And his friend was a, a butthole. So I already felt like, all right, I felt kind of uncomfortable a little bit, but I just stayed quiet and I agreed to come, you know, out of nowhere. Like this where the confusion came into after a couple months because I didn't really get to know him. We only talked for like three, three days, three or four days. And it wasn't really about much besides me. You don't never tell a man. If you're a true queen, you know to stay in your place, be quiet, and just listen. You don't never, ever, ever have to tell a man all about you. Because the man that God sends you, he will already have insight and wisdom about you. Okay? Alright. <laughs> so.
so listen right we barely talked about anything and all he did was you know caress my ego tell me how beautiful i was and tell me that he liked me so much which there was really not much for him to like besides i was getting to somebody and i had some time for him that was the only thing he liked okay <laughs> so right so anyways me and this boy he was in the man he's a boy and and there's a very big difference all right so this man or boy this boy not a man a boy boy he was like oh do you want something to drink that was like okay <laughs> a nice little a nice little gesture to me so i felt like in my head the envy manipulates us in our mind often let's just say every day okay them bad negative thoughts they don't come from god they come from the enemy and that's who's the author he has a battlefield over your mind over your thoughts and everything you think of so he don't want you to think about anything that god has for you or anything that is good he don't want you to think about it all right he's gonna send something to block your mind distract you anything because god gave him that power we can be saved through Jesus from those evil thoughts so that we can ultimately just turn to him when Satan rises up against us because everyone knows if you read the Bible okay or if you're a scripture scholar which I'm not I just read and I have understanding okay darkness will have its hour one hour in our lives and that that's when guys will shine our light through the darkness of the tunnel okay so back to the story where he asked me what I wanted to drink and it was a real question because we stopped at the gas station his friend stopped at a gas station and he asked me what i wanted to drink and i said apple juice because that's what i wanted to drink <laughs> he laughed at me he looked at his friend like ah and laughed so it was like it was weird that was a red flag whenever a man finds something about you funny and i mean it's not funny that's a red flag. That shows that he has no seriousness in you. He doesn't take you serious because somebody you're not gonna laugh at them. Especially after you ask him a question, right? About them. You know, you, you like a person, you really truly care about a person, you care about everything about them, their flaws and all. Okay, all right. So he went up into the store. I seen through like the glasses friend kept staring at me. I ignored it. I had my little phone. I was in my phone. I didn't really care. I was just trying to look cute because this boy was cute. Which of course, like I said, the enemy will send you of this perfect gift. You be like, oh my god, how I got this? It's from the devil. That's how, and that's why. Oh, and it'll be your pain after. Okay. All right. So. After he got me my apple juice, after he laughed about it, he came, He got back in the car. First thing he started doing, because I, I was smoking weed at the time. I've been smoking weed ever since I was 18. Like, this is how the devil had worked in that moment. The weed is a mind-altering substance, okay? Obviously, that first hit makes you feel what? Not yourself. I can tell you that all right and it's not good inhaling smoke in your lungs they become real black and real old oh and real real not usable after a while okay all right so the enemy through my mind state in this car with his friend and his friend is single for a million reasons like I said he was looking at me weird laughing and it was the weirdest guy I had kind of met. <laughs> so at this time, right, he rolling up this lump in the car, and it's just a lump. He ain't actually trying to figure out what I'm doing in my life, and he knew I was doing stuff in my life. That's what the enemy wants to do too. He wants to come into your life like a wrecking ball when you're doing good things, and it could be through a man, all right? It will be through that man that you are lusting for. It will be through a man that you think you need when we just need to breathe air, okay, and do God's will. So he's rolling up this blunt and he's like, he's 
it's really more than one blunt. So it's like, all right, I didn't really smoke as much because I'm 18, I just started smoking, right? And pass me the blunt, right? And I'm smoking this big old blunt and I'm like this, and then I'm watching him roll another one. So I'm already as high as as I can get, or as you can get, or as the sky, okay? I'm already at the climax of high. Like, okay? <laughs> so he's doing that, not me. I'm young in my mind. All I was caring about was money, the root of all evil, okay? The one thing that you shouldn't care about because the wages of that we all know you're gonna be dead with it okay that's it so this man actually passes me the second blunt now I already took a couple of hits of the first blunt and I'm like this in my coma basically <laughs> and uh, he passes me another one because he's realizing like the enemy is working through him as a pawn and he's realizing that I'm already not in my zone my own self i'm already not knowing the difference between what he's doing or what he's trying to do which is what happens when you smoke okay people are just gonna take advantage of you whether you see it or you don't they will and they are taking advantage of you hi okay hi to the limits of high and i'm not caring about if this dude is high he about to crash because demons like to enter your body and like to pick with you when they know you're not sober. That's why the Bible say, be sober and vigilant. Because the enemy seeks who he can devour like a roaring lion. Okay, he's roaring for you to not be sober, to be drunk. Okay, and let me, I'll be get to that point, all right? So this man, right? This boy. He's not a man, he's a boy. I keep saying man because that's who I thought I was with. In my mind, I was a man. I was a boy. So that boy had me higher than a kite in the backseat. And I'm sitting here, you know, I wasn't smoking. When I was 18, I wasn't smoking like that. I didn't even know how to roll my own joint at the time. I was just, I asked my brothers to do it, or, you know, I just say forget it, I have to go to work anyway, because it took up all my time, okay? That's what God, God was just trying to take up all my time so I wouldn't be all into this negativity. But the moment I stepped out of that and then stepped into this um, position where I felt less than, because I didn't, I always see my friends or somebody with a man or yeah, somebody that they're dependent on or feels that they need to feel good when you should feel good all by yourself, all alone, okay? Because you live in and you breathe in even though you smoke or you don't, all right? That's God's gift, life. When we could have, when we basically were supposed to be dead because we're sinners. And where do sinners belong? Hmm. All right, so. <laughs> now, he's passing me the second blunt. Because after a couple hits of the first blunt, I can't breathe. My Your, your breathing even gets irregular at this point. You start. <sighs> All right, yeah. So, it's, and then your voice changes. It's just sadness. It's sadness. The devil is just sitting there like, ah, ha, ha. I'm killing you soft and slow and nice, just like how I like to see you suffer nice and slow. So the devil's getting his victory, right? He getting a good, good, good laugh on, right? And the fact that I even came home to my kids like this, he's laughing like, ah, look at your mom. And my youngest son was like a baby at the time. It was just my oldest son. He was about three years old. So I'm pretty sure you guys know he could tell the difference or any baby could tell the difference, young or older, doesn't matter. They can tell when you're high and, and their mother is not the same, okay? And that is the devil trying to teach them through you because you're high. <laughs> um, well, 
it's okay because mommy's doing it. So that little enemy demon pops up in your child head when they get older or when they get that certain age where they is not around you, but they're around the next kid who mom didn't care to teach them the difference between good and evil, okay? Okay, when their baby gets around that age, that demon gonna creep up in their head, well, you should do this because remember that day you seen your mom like this. You seen your mom like this, you remember? Yeah, remember that feeling? Back to the story, right? This man passes me the second blunt, and I just take it because I'm already possessed at this point because I'm smoking. Okay, God didn't give Moses a blunt for his problems at all. No, he gave him a tree to sat under because he was hot and he felt bothered. And if you ask God through your troubles how you're feeling, what your troubles to help you with that? Oh, well, of course he's gonna re you gonna receive. Best believe that. All right. So after that moment. I just took the blunt, the second one, and I started puffing on that. So after that, I started feeling this wrong breathing pattern. Like I just, I just took it. I didn't care. Basically, I was messing myself up, putting myself, digging myself in a hole, not knowing I was digging myself in a hole to dependency. Okay, if you end up smoking every day, and you notice that or rather you don't care, or if you don't notice that, it's going to become a pattern in your life where you ultimately see that it's taking over certain things. You're going to have to tell yourself, oh, no, I'll just try to do this after. That's it trying to become the it in your life, okay? Deny it and leave it alone, okay? You don't need it. It took me so long to realize that, okay? I didn't end up in nobody's hospital or nobody's nothing. I was just tired of watching the enemy use me okay use you okay so at now i'm high we go to his friend's house we get higher higher <laughs> to the point where i'm like well how high did you get to the point where you're building a tolerance you don't even know a tolerance is something that you're exceeding to the limits that you already exceeded so you're accepting more than what you need to make it a higher um, need for it so the higher say you smoke this much you're gonna need to smoke this much next time you smoke this much you're gonna need to smoke and we end up smoking like two or three more blunts now I'm like this I'm looking at everybody else their tolerance is like sky high the roof as high as the roof past the roof they like this they need more than what they already gave me and I didn't smoke with it and it's only because I didn't smoke as much as them, I was just 18. I only I didn't even know how to roll my own blunts. Okay, I didn't know how to roll my own blunts. So we had his friend's house, and they're all like this, and then somebody else decides to roll up again until they're like this. So you would have to smoke 45 blunts until you got like this. That's you building a tolerance. The more that you can inhale that smoke, the more the enemy can just get you out because that's what he wants to do. So that is his job. Okay, God had gave him a job. A job. He will do that job. Okay, like your job. You get up and go. He get up. Actually, he don't sleep. He go. All right. His job is just go do it and it get done. It'll get done. All right, so I'm at his friend house and I'm thinking I'm having me a good time. Now, mind you, I had money and I had a little bit of friends families that I you know would hang with do something with but I had this emptiness because my bride didn't have a dad in my life that I knew that would be present with me or that was there ever since I was a child okay so since birth I have been missing this this daddy so the enemy me just been using this daddy issue Oh, you know, you don't know who your dad is, so look for love in the wrong places. That's what the enemy did. And how we go to his house. We go to his house, and there's still no communication. 
really because we're high. We're actually, you know, pawns of the enemy at this point. And we're just sitting there like high. And there's nothing to be said when you're high. The demons cover your mouth like this. And close your eyes like this. So you don't know. You can't speak. You can't really express how you feel. Because the enemy don't care about how you feel. He don't even care about your life. He just don't want you to live the life God has for you. You. Okay? So... The enemy is getting his glory at this point, and me and this boy is high. And at this point, he's just like, you know, rubbing up on me. He's like, oh, take your pants off, all types of stuff. So not really knowing him, meeting him three days or four days ago on Facebook, <laughs> my crazy self do it, you know? <laughs> That's what we will make you do, okay? Right, so <laughs> I do that, and we do our little business and we fall asleep so the whole day was no communication it was just this high thing it was just that that was what the enemy knew that he can get me on because he knew that when i was 18 i felt like i was kind of overworking myself 12 hour shifts and then i haven't finished high school at all yet i am in that process and can no demon and no hell no, no devil can stop that. No man can stop that, okay? So I haven't graduated high school, and I was doing adult education and basically working 12-hour shifts at the same time. So I was really trying on my time in my life that time. I was trying to do something different from my whole family. So basically, I was, you know, in the devil's snare, and... I felt I, t I let my loneliness take advantage of that and he knew that I didn't want to feel like that because the enemy knew that in my head I kept talking about this emptiness this void he took it and ran with it God allowed him to do that because you know what God said I'm gonna allow this moment to be her breakthrough this whole relationship to be her breakthrough so enemy you will have your darkness for an hour but my glory lasts eternity forever and my light will shine in her, regardless. So, okay. This boy, right? <laughs> we wake up, and automatically, I'm in my right state of mind because the weed, it been hours, the weed done left. We sleep, right? I wake up. He's already talking on the phone with some guy and holding me in his arms like, oh, she's not going nowhere. Like, that is control. That is of the devil. <laughs> Okay, he's like, oh, you're not going nowhere. I try to put a get up, put on my clothes. He's like, where are you going? Standing in front of the door. That's a bold spirit. That bold spirit that controls a person does not come from God. No, it do not. Jesus controls us. He tells us which way to go and how to jump and how high. All right, so this man, now, he let me go anyways because... I guess he was living with his mom or whatever, his dad. And they were not allowing him to keep somebody captive in his room, no matter how much he wanted to. So, my crazy self. I done left because I told him I had work, and I went to work from his house. And then I ended up coming back to his house, back to the trap. That's the thing. So, even though I realized that this man really didn't want nothing from me besides my body and a good time and a pretty girl to look at or whatever. So he's sitting there, you know, texting me on the phone while I'm at work, oh, who you with? And I took a picture while I was at work. So, you know, just because I admired myself at that time, I had really high confidence in myself because I was proud of myself and what I was doing and the woman that I'm becoming. And so he's texting me, oh, and this is the enemy using him. This probably not even really him. Because by the time I had, let me tell you that story, right? Time I get back to him, and after he was texting me, oh, you with a whole nother guy, and he done looked at the, the picture, and I had posted it on Facebook back then, and he already looked at the picture like, yeah, she's working, she's not with me, I bet you all these guys are looking at her be uh, an amazing person. The enemy doesn't want to see you do 
anything good for yourself nothing okay not spread your testimony to other people who might help okay not go to work and he gets nervous when you wake up okay hell definitely gets nervous because we are god's creation okay and he can't really harm us unless god gives him the permission all right he doesn't even have keys to his own house okay god throws him in there all right okay so like back at his house after work i don't even go home to my kids i don't even go home to my kids so the enemy is already manipulating me in my mind where i'm forgetting about the importance of what i was doing all this work for and what i was i stopped going to school for work at that time too so that was the first step red flag that the enemy is really going hard at you in your life so okay, right i come back and he's already like waiting downstairs i get an uber to his house at 18 years old my dad and my mom they watching my kids and they're like well where did you go so they're trying to find some type of good understanding in their mind because they already been through what i've been through they already you know walk that way of life or whatever and know where it's gonna end up and lead to all right in the bible it says obey your mother and father because they know okay they already know all right they already know all right my parents would blow me up i turned my phone right off why because i felt like i deserve a fake daddy or <laughs> or um yeah some man to make me feel good and so the enemy just used it for a month went by of us doing the same thing we he the next day basically after i went and spent a night we did our business because we didn't have no respect not even for each other we just gave each other ourselves and that's where the entanglements and the um that's where everything came in at all right so i'm controlling this and that's where the deceiving come in at that's where the beating my behind came in at because i let him i let him birth the fact that he could control me with that boldness and it was only the sex okay once you have a sex with a person you allow them to do whatever okay you won't see it but you'll feel it later you will feel it especially if he ain't your husband you will feel that pain because he could just leave he's not entitled to you you could yell scream beat him up till he blew in the face knock him in the head with a bop he's still gone in the wind <laughs> if he definitely ain't married to you okay so the next day after i go to his house he all oh we're gonna go back with my friend now mind you this friend had nothing good going really for themselves he was a weird type of dude and he ain't in a good place right now to this day so it was like a huge sign or huge red flag okay this boy i was um fornicating with didn't really have a good friend so how could you be a good person and you're not even you don't have a good friend you're not even a good person because you are who you hang around okay and if that is a hating friend who are you and if that is a evil wicked friend who are you okay all right so it's like at that time that was a huge red flag that listen he don't even have a good friend obviously that friend rubs off on you and spirits jump to different people they don't jump into cups and plates and cars no <laughs> they jump it is this boy is just like smoking me up again the devil is just trying to build this tolerance with me smoking like smoky smoking smoking to the point because he just kept on rolling because he had this high tolerance to the point where he couldn't even really get high and a lot of people that we ran into that day or he took the to people that houses i visited they couldn't have a time they had a high tolerance they just couldn't get high they just kept on smoking because it was good to their taste buds in their mouth it was good to kill their lungs 
that's what made them look cool. And then that's what made me look cool. All right, so <laughs> after that, right, we end up drinking. So I didn't really drink at all at 18, like none. That was, and this boy I met was the way that the enemy could just introduce me to so much of his tactics, his, his game, where okay, if you going out, I'm going to hell, I'm taking you with me. That's just what hell does. That's the game mentality hell has. Why do you think with mass murders and mass shootings, they kill other people and they kill themselves. The spirit of the devil. The devil. Okay? I'm revealing it all. Crushing serpents' heads. Okay, today? This might be uncomfortable to you, but if it's uncomfortable to you, then it's working. Let it seep on down in you. Alright, so me and this dude are spending more time around each other. In my mind, the devil already has me. Cause I'm high as a kite he's saying yeah he likes you no he doesn't and he likes you he's spending all this time around you instead of other girls now mind you I was at work when I was at work for 12 hours 12 hours to get a paycheck right on my feet he could have been with any girl he could have been at home because he had his own room okay and there was a door for other women to walk in okay there was a door you can open that door and while nobody is there you can let somebody come in and fill that void because that's what I was doing at the time feeling this void for him okay because he wasn't oh can you marry me and be my my lawful wedded wife forever because I see this goodness in you that I may need in me too no 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 he just seen God's creation which the devil just can't stand okay so been all this time together me and then his friends been all this time together right we just high higher than high right <laughs> Woo! i wonder what jewel you get out of getting high now besides being numb so me and this dude right we just end up going back to the house it was barely no words again being exchanged. We talked here and there like he stroked my ego. Like I said, the devil just wants to tell you good things you want to hear. He don't want to give you nothing you need. He don't give you nothing you need, child. Nothing. Nothing, child. Nothing. He just want to give you your wants because he know that our desires are going to kill us. Softly. Okay, not fast like i said but softly okay his 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 not even realizing i'm digging myself in this hole and i'm digging myself in this hole and i'm digging myself in a hole of tolerance and i'm digging myself in a hole of disgrace with my body and i'm digging myself in a hole with my mind process and how i was thinking oh and i'm digging myself in a hole where my my body in the inside is getting corroded from smoking okay Firefighters do not go in a building with nothing on to inhale good smoke. No. They don't want to die quickly or slowly. Okay? That is not God's plan for them. So they harm themselves, right? So I'm digging myself in this hole, not realizing that this is the enemy's plan and plot. And I didn't really know God at the time. So that was mainly the reason why he used it. Parents, if you don't teach your child about God, you're sadly mistaking their future, okay? You can teach them all the good things, all right? The devil works in the highest places like music productions, okay? Your kids getting cussed out by these nasty music, and you wonder why they cuss you out. Well, they got somebody else in their ear cussing them out in them headphones, okay? And they on YouTube, watching TV, letting the enemy soak things into, because our eyes are the keys and the door to our soul, Okay, so obviously what you see oh, is what you get. Our brain automatically depicts things from what our eyes see. And our brain being it natural, it already analyzes everything we see and everything that we look at. Okay, evil or good? Because remember, these forces are at battle. And remember who wants to sever your communication with your maker. Jesus Christ, God. Oh, manipulating me in so many ways. To the point where I'm like, all right, well, at least he's spending time with me. 
and at least I don't see which you don't have to you don't have to see okay even your intuition will tell you all right believe that intuition all right because that's the Holy Spirit that was breathed into us when we were created by God to tell us when something is wrong and it is not from him okay so it's up to us if we actually want to believe that or we don't so my manipulation was so bad to the point where like I'm 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 just obeying him at this point because he's smoking me up I didn't smoke like that at the time when I was 18 so he's just feeding me feeding me feeding me feeding me feeding me feeding me which the enemy will feed you weed Rust, just so you could not be in your mind state so that he could go bother your kids with the little YouTube videos and the little um, games that he has set up so that basically traps that he has set up so that he could take over our children's mind our gen he wants generations by the way he don't just want you he wants you your kid your kid kid your kid 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 oh and whatever else that your kid has to produce on the telling me how much he likes me he didn't show it. Only thing he did was spend time with me and smoke. And buy me stuff to eat. I mean, he see that I was a working woman or working girl. I wasn't even a woman. I was a girl at the time, right? He seen how I'm providing my own self for my own self. And he sees that I am taking care of myself, getting my own cosmetics, getting my own clothes, getting my own shoes, right? So he's like, well, I don't have to do that for her then she's already doing it for herself that's not a man okay a man will always cater to your needs your needs which is if he feels like he want to do something for you that's good you know that's from god good not bad not evil and nothing manipulative to make you think if you have to think and wonder and be confused let's break this down okay the word confused the word confused is not from god it's from the devil because let's look at it. Con, right? Con. What does con stands for? Con artist. Conning. Conning you out of your common sense. All right? Your common sense. All right? And then fuse. He know he's putting that con to a fuse. He's fusing something in you that you ain't never had before. And it's bad. Okay? So, confused. That's of the devil. So if you're confused about it, it's not from God. God don't give you stuff to make you feel confused about it. But I bet you everything that God gave you, you were sure about it, and you feel good about it. Okay? Ain't no confusion in that, honey. All right. So this is what happens, right? A month later, after I done let this man control me and let the enemy talk sweet good nothings to my ears, sweet good nothings good nothings to my ear right and he's telling me oh well if you try to leave we gonna fight bruh fight <laughs> so i mean before this relationship i already been through abusive relationships with my kids fathers all right that's a whole nother video. Like I said, it's so many testimonies I got to tell y'all. Because God, he's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. He's amazing, right? So, after he tells me that, we actually end up fighting. Because, remember, I have this job that I'm trying to keep up. The enemy is trying to tear it down, all right? He will try to tear down anything you have good going for yourself, all right? Especially if it's not from God and he gave it to you he gonna snatch it back so that you can feel distressed depressed and sad and honestly it just made me feel like well I'm gonna have to fight him one because the enemy already had in my mind fight for what you love fight for what you need <laughs> fight for what's yours and this was not mine this is not this is not what i signed up for oh no i did not sign up for this but i fought the boy and did he overpower me yes men do overpower women okay there is too much men in this world too many 
okay? And they will overpower you. You you one person, woman, okay? One man made from a man. Okay? Read Genesis. And to the point where I mean my body was feeling like hurt after this fight. Like the enemy was just taking jabs, like, yeah. I already got her job. She gonna lose that. Jab at that. Oh, he put on his boxing gloves for real, for real. And he was like, oh, I'm a job at her. Yup. She gonna feel worse and less of a woman. She gonna feel like she needs this person now because he hurt her. So jab at this. Oh, I'm a jab at her kids because her kids are gonna be bothered by this situation. They're gonna be affected by this trauma because they gonna wonder where their mommy went all of a sudden. Jab at her life. Jab after jab after jab. And that's what he does. Slowly and surely, he's gonna jab at you. And that's his job. Because we need to realize who is over him. God. Okay? We need to call on to him. When we feel things like that or we feel confused, con. Remember the devil trying to con you out of your common sense. So if you confuse, you know that's of the enemy. You know it is. Let me leave. So he had to, he had to do all that to feel good about himself because the enemy already used him all his life. And, you know, done is using him to manipulate and manipulate you know my mind at this point so he starts um pushing me around you know tell and this is this is from the guy that used to call me beautiful all this type of stuff you know whisper sweet old nothing to my ears so basically he used to tell me like oh if you try to tell somebody or like you know the the enemy just want to manipulate like, in order for him to bring you to that dark place that I was once at he has to change your mind first he has to change your mind first about your self worth about why you're here and about why you living and what you're doing good for Okay, he has to change that in your mind first. And if whatever way he has to change it, whether it be around your friends, that they already don't have self-worth, or if it be around people who don't know God, so that he could just wash away your memory of what God has done for you or what he's going to do for you. If it's through your friends that don't know who he is, even if it's through your job that's going to tire you out so you don't have time to even know who God is. Boy, oh boy so let me tell you because I'm already getting into this entanglement with no care in the world also with that loneliness spirit I'm also getting into this entanglement with um, unexpected expectations and um, ultimately for the whole so here I am in this relationship good happy and dandy right to be getting beat up, right? And it, even though nobody's seen that his mom and his dad was at work or whatever, they weren't home when this was happening. So he getting the good glory. He's happy. He's like, yeah, I got control. Because he didn't even have control over his own life. And men or boys who beat you up or hit on a woman, they just use you as a human teddy bear. Because when guys or when you're small and your mother tells you not to do something, you get mad, you go in there and beat up your teddy bear and take it all out on your teddy bear, all on your little stuffed animal, which is what a boy does, okay? Even if he got aged to 36 or 45 and he's touching the female in a way that they ain't supposed to be touched, he, you are literally a human teddy bear. You're just breathing and you're living, but you're a teddy bear. He gets to beat up on you because what life has done to him and he doesn't have a grasp over his own life. So this is what he will do to you. Because you're allowing it, right? Me. I'm allowing it. Okay? So realizing this is after like four months. And I'm starting to feel bad. I still had this job. And then <laughs> to the point where, all right, his mom and his dad is at home with him. And they hear us fighting this time. This time... God had brung somebody to actually listen to what was going on because the enemy was just having fun. 
he'll have fun with you for as much as you let him and as long as you let him and as, as long as you allow him to he will have fun with you right so he just having fun have his, his good old sweet time and he's just taking me through the motions and taking me deeper in the hole to the point where I feel like I need this man to feel good about myself lie 192 okay the enemy is the king of lies all right he's the king of lies he will lie to you he will lie to you till you can't understand another lie all right listen okay. they hear it and they bust up in the room they don't bust up in the room and see like me bruised up or anything they just see me sad and crying lo and behold nevertheless I didn't they didn't kick me out I just decided to leave because it was so embarrassing right end up coming back oh why because when your entanglement is literally an entanglement you're getting tied into this knot and you're not gonna know how to take this knot apart obviously until you study what got you in the knot or how to get the knot out you know so to get it untied so until you actually take your time to realize about this entanglement or this knot, you're just going to be in an entanglement or a knot. And you're going to be like, how did I get into this? And how the hell do I get out? You're not going to be able to unless you call on God. That is the reason why it happened. This is the enemy's job. Like you go, it's his job. It's his job, right? So now after his parents walk in his parents talk to him and i come back like a week later because we needed a break after this fight you know i needed a break and i and that with that break i ain't do nothing but go home sob to myself oh because remember through the, through the whole four months i'm digging myself in this hole of self-worth and um no self-worth no excuse me no um care in the world all this stuff like I'm just digging myself in this hole and because I'm letting the weed he's like I'm letting the weed like be my comfort at this time and not even knowing who God is I'm letting the enemy comfort me with things that's going to kill me softly nice and slow because lungs meat smoke equals not gonna work anymore okay that's not what your lungs is for smoke <laughs> So I comforted myself with this deathly tool, all right? The devil's lettuce I am comforting myself with, right? And I'm just smoking and smoking it, and I asked my brother to roll it for me, so I done got so dependent to the fact that I knew I couldn't do it until I actually learned, and that's what that was like the burial of me, the burial. Because once I learned, oh, it was no stopping. It was no stopping me. Once I got my check, it was boom. All right, boom. Death, here I come. Nice and slow. Not fast, though. Here I come to the races. You know, so it was like... <laughs> so it was like, yo. Right after a week that we need this break, and after probably he was messing with some other girl, getting his rocks off, because you're not around 24-7. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. Okay, just because you have eyes through another person, their eyes ain't even there all the time either, literally. So, the only person watching is Jesus. Alright, so after this, right, this person tells me, yeah, me and my parents were getting into it. Because, I mean, they know the right, they've been through what we've been through. They know the difference of what's going to happen and the outcome of all this. Especially, they're not wanting it to happen in their house, right? So... When, they, when he decided that when his parents leave, he was going to sneak me over after this point. Because now they're noticing, wait, I'm going to get to that, some anger issues. And they had, no, they had no idea. They didn't know at this point. I'm just this girl who he had met and seen, you know, so precious, so whatever in his mind. He just wanted to take advantage and control. And sure enough, he did that okay so now home after they, they they come home and they see me in their house 
and they're not rude or condescending or anything so they're like you know what is she not like in their mind they're like what is she why would she want to be with him after i just saved her from him my own son getting into the you know nitty gritty with her so they're like okay maybe maybe it didn't went on how i thought in my head it's probably what they thought who knows so they went on to their own business you know and here i am silly silly and foolish as can be it happens again that night oh and it happens when they're nice and sleepy because they have worked a hard day okay they are entitled to peaceful sleep that god gives us so he's doing this and getting a good thrill out of it just so he can have this thing they call makeup sex now makeup sex what you making up from what do you i mean an argument why would you want to argue with somebody you love does that not wear down your self-worth to somewhere deep down it's, unless you really don't care i mean either way somewhere deep down it bothers you somewhere it bothers you right why would you want to fight somebody you love that was a second red flag or a red flag 100 million that he did not love me he did not care for me because you don't see people fighting their mom and they say they love their mom you don't see people fighting their dad and they say they love their dad and they don't see people fighting their children like fighting their children like what was happening to me and they say they love their children no so that was automatically from the enemy make up make up for what you did so that this is the only way you will be able to make up ever in life for whatever failure you have whatever sad story you have to give for whatever um past failure you have or i have anger problems so he's already trying to embed in my mind like the enemy is using him to embed in my mind that this is what i deserve because if you're going to be my girlfriend you have to take this side of me <laughs> you have to take this side of me and accept who i am first of all god accepts you for who you are all right not me we are sinners I do not have to accept that evil side of a person. You don't either. No, you just deserve. God loves us, so he wants to give us the best. When I say the best, I mean the best of the best. The best of the best. I mean, in every way, man, relationships, whatever. He wants to give that to us the best way. And that's only through acknowledging him. Okay, so he will let darkness have an hour in our life for this to just come up and come upon him just so we could call on him that makes him smile that makes him happy it's acknowledgement and when acknowledgement births hope and it births all those good things that god has for us something that the devil wants to cover your eyes so you don't see oh and the only way he's gonna do that is puff puff and you you like this that's it that's the only way he's gonna cover it like this so you not you think you have the good things those things will go they will perish they're not there and you won't have everlasting life because you have gotten your reward material things things that the devil gives you like a car a home a million dollars um makeup a massager a vibrator which is a sin a nasty disgusting lustful ugh, sin okay that's another video and so, um, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Je even demons bow to his name because it has so much power. If y'all only knew the magical, amazing, avengeance, angelus father that I have, you will understand. You won't even think twice about leaving most of the stuff alone because you know greater is to come. Like, there's so much good that you missing out on because you want what the enemy has for you which is less of us like that ain't nothing to what god has for us nothing <laughs> so right he got us like this and we hide we smoking so we smoke again so we got we're gonna numb that pain after i was just like this and he never made my face like my other past relationships had done 
another video remind you right so we just numbing our pain and then letting an enemy come into us and we're just fornicating 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 till we sweat and we tired and we just laid out nothing left to do but laying out <laughs> don't go out for ice cream don't go on a walk don't go to no pool don't go anywhere good you just laid out after if him tiring you out <laughs> no dinner to be made no nothing you just laid out and wear it out all right so and you just gonna get up and go make dinner yourself because <laughs> you hungry and this man done tired you out right well the enemy done tired you out and he uses people not cups so after that his parents start to think like you know what if he gonna do this and she gonna fall for it and they knew the uh, um, setup that I had in my life he talked to them his parents he talked to them you know he told them about my life told them that I had my own place you know and I had kids and I was working for myself and that I was doing something so they took it upon themselves, like, okay, well, since she all that stable and said, Kiara, go with her, because you in my house taking up all my space, eating all my food, all this stuff. He a grown, good and grown boy. When I say good and grown, he good and grown. Two legs, ten, um, ten toes, ten fingers. I mean, he good and grown, right? He could do the impossible if he actually allowed himself, all right? So, he's like, to me now, right? He, I'm in the room, I'm hearing all this commotion after him, because they done called us in the room, called me in the room, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't know that they didn't want me there, because I had a little bit of respect for myself, like, after the, he done beat it out of me, I had a little bit of respect for myself, and I used to tell him, like, you know, if you keep doing that, your parents are gonna, they're gonna see that, they're gonna notice that, he didn't care because he didn't care about them. He didn't care about himself. And he didn't have no self-worth. I like the enemy with the devil's already using him to manipulate other people. Basically using him like how God will use his child, but in a good way. But, you know, the enemy was using him in a bad way. Like, okay, do this, go here, say this, and do that. So after that was done, he gonna come in the room good and be, well, I want to live with you. And I'm like... Oh my god why well what happened i'm like in distraught because i'm knowing this ain't good now the holy spirit will warn you when something is not good it's called your intuition if you don't know who god is and you don't know the, who the holy spirit is it's called the intuition in your soul in your body so if you don't know who that is right god will use that in you to say no this is not from me this is no good this is gonna lead to your destruction you're gonna be real real hurt and mad after this process because god warns his people because he loves us so even in the midst of us getting in that darkness of that hour god is there with us okay and he's warning us of everything that the every trap that the enemy has because like i said the enemy gets permission to bother us that's if we're not covered in the blood and we don't pray okay prayer is actually releasing ourselves from those evil thoughts and evil feelings because we're venting to god okay we owe him that because look we're breathing we're alive and we inhale and smoke we're not supposed to and it didn't kill us yet that's mercy remember how i said it's mercy and grace because lungs and smoke don't go together it's all in your head all in your head right so <laughs> he's literally like yeah i want to go with you and i'm like oh my god i can't say no because this is my my dangling at the time this is my my hope my pride my everything <laughs> literally like it was just sadness right so he never proposed never even talk about marriage nothing he never did none of that. He just smoked me up. We went with his weird friend every day. And that was it. And then he, he talked about, too, like, trying to get me impregnated, all types of stuff. Like, birthing a baby full of trauma, okay? Because if that was to happen, the parents wasn't even stable in their minds. So the enemy was just trying to create something out of nothing. Like, nothing. Nothing at all. So... 
God, he only allow it what he wants to allow, okay? Not what the enemy wants to allow. The, I, the enemy just want to kill us and get us good and gone. And if he could have did that quickly, he would do it quickly. But he likes to do it nice and slow because he doesn't want you to know that it's him. Because if he knew that it, if he knew that you knew that was the enemy trying to kill us nice and slow, he knew his plans would stop. He knew that he would never been able to get to us no more. So in that hour, um, that dark, dark, dark hour, and I'm like, it was in the middle of the night too. Like his parents was telling him to go. And he had to go, right? I was in the middle of the night now. I've been at his house every day, literally. Not This is what the enemy has done. And it's definitely because of weed. Definitely. So in the middle of the night, I'm allowing him to come to my house. I don't know where my parents never even heard of this dude. My, my mother never heard of this dude. I never even call him or call her about this dude. Like, they just end up seeing him. Like, well... Who is this? This must be a nice friend because he came all the way to your house. I mean, what is he here for? So, and my sons, like, they're like, Mom, who's this? At this point, I'm like, feeling like I need, like, entitlement. That entitlement spirit is not from God, okay? What you entitled to is air. What you entitled to is to wake up the next day and make hell mad and nervous. That's what you're entitled to because God gave us that entitlement, okay? Whatever the next person have and it's theirs, it don't belong to us. It's just feeling like entitlement. Oh, and that entitlement will have you feeling like... People who feel entitled to things that doesn't belong to them is just evil spirits. So, okay, right? Go back to the story, right? I'm already like, well, okay, so if he comes to my house, then even if he was in my mind, the enemy is talking to me so hard, like, I don't even hear my own thoughts, because we're already high, we're already high, and we're already speaking, when a man gets you high before a real conversation, you already know that's not a real conversation, oh, and if you're high talking or having a real conversation, it's not a real, it's all in your head, all in your head, so, right? Like, the enemy literally tells me in my mind, yes, let him come over. Yes, yes. Now he gets to come around her children that he doesn't care about at all, right? He gets to come around her mom and dad, and I get to let them see her perish in front of them nice and slow, okay? Not that it's nice and slow. So I get to, like, he gets to, like, get that glory from, from whatever God was allowing him to do. Until I got to the point where I had to call on him, right? So, right, it was just the worst time ever, right, after I let him come to my house when I was 18. And I just, I started to feel like, okay, this was good because the enemy was in my mind. And I'm like, yeah, he gets to come to my house. We get to spend time with each other we get to do all this stuff now it's still working up until the point where it came a good a good whole month at my house with him we were fighting now the fighting already started at his house so i'm already inviting the fight to my house and we was in different cities so i already got he packed up all his stuff and he went to my house in a different city right this is how messed up this boy was so let me tell you right we already at his, we done caught the Uber there. I done paid something, no, no, all this money. And we just packing it up. Now, I didn't even really have a whole bed at my house. Like, like that's what I was working so hard for, to get me a bed, get me, I already had the apartment, I was getting me a TV. I didn't even have a TV. It was only one big TV in my living room. And that was it, okay? Like, that was it. So I was paying rent for, it wasn't even owned. 18 and I got my own place so the enemy seen that and he was so upset that I got my own place too he, he will try to destroy everything God gave you if you allow him to so after I got that place and I let him come with me and made it his place 
he he was a clean person. He did clean. <laughs> that was a little bit I had to good to go off of because that was it. Like, all right, and we would <laughs> do some crazy stuff in my room. My parents had my kids. It was just sad. My parents had my kids while I was fornicating and they didn't they didn't want to get in the middle of that because my parents knew what was going on what was good good and going on too you know they knew that god was doing something even though the enemy was working they knew that god was doing something for my own good okay the enemy never has the last say so at all so after right after that happened and we're going through all this stuff and he literally started beating on me in my own house and I'm like letting this go on until the point where I actually lose my job because I want to stay home with him and feel good because he done beat the self-worth out of me right and it took like almost a year for this to just go on for him to just beat it out of me it took me a year to lose my self-worth so like I said, it ain't gonna happen like this. It might take a few years. You will feel less of a person. And it's just the devil having fun, laughing at you and you can't see it, right? So it's just this constant argument my, my babies get to see and hear like, what's going on? Cops came to my place like three times. Woo, let me tell you. To the point where I lose my job, we even go sit in a jail cell. We riding in the back of a paddy wagon together. Uh, wasn't this the perfect love story at one point? The devil will send you the most prettiest boy. Okay? Gift wrap. Like in this cute little bow and this cute little shoes and, and his beard. Your pain, sis. <clears throat> Your pain. If he ain't ready to put a ring on it, no. It's pain. It will definitely be pain in that pleasure. So listen, right? What happened, right? So, because <laughs> the devil likes to kill us nice and slow. He want to take ourselves over nice and slow. God just wants us to just trust in him and believe in him and be delivered from that. So if we actually resist things like that and actually have standards, stand up for what we really want and stand up for what we believe in. Stand. Can't say standards without the word stand. Okay, so stand up for the kingdom of God. We, he will give us a kingdom man. Okay, a man that has stand. He stands for Jesus standards standards all right so if you don't have none go get some because you got it you got a deep bone in you you just covered like this just ask god to take the blindfold off so anyway right we sitting in the back at a paddy wagon and we getting arrested on breach of peace because it literally is a breach of peace how are you sitting in the house with your children and your parents and you have neighbors and you screaming and yelling and fighting and you don't care First of all, we're high out of our brains. High off of weed. Like, I don't know what was in that weed, but it must have been good. I mean, great. <laughs> good, great. <laughs> For us to be smoking that and not even care. Like, okay, we going to jail at this point. And this happened like three times to the point where we can never even see each other again. Like, cops even catch on to like, like what's going on to like, oh no. This this was this is this is not gonna go on no more. Not only for us, but for my kids. They realize the kids' faces, my kids' face, they realize like my own apartment. Can I tell you that hell was that was the happiest day for hell. To see me so broken, so distraught so down dismayed to the point where i didn't even know who god was i couldn't even call out on him my mind was not even thinking about him because the enemy done played me so bad 
so slow, like a little fiddle, like a game, like to the point where who you gonna call on? You don't have no weed. I didn't have no job. <laughs> what you gonna go do for it? Okay, right? <laughs> so well, I had got let out because I didn't have no history now. <sighs> this is how you know this is pain. You won't even know about the man you're with unless you go right up into that justice system and see what is the nasty things he have ever done in his life. This man had this worst, worst, worst history with law enforcement to the point where he was happy to get out the city he was in because they knew him and they could have had a chance to tell me all about him. I mean, I wasn't in the city he was in, which is, you know, Connecticut. They didn't know him, but they knew something was going on that wasn't right. It was nothing but manipulation, evilness was going on because I couldn't think for myself. You asked me a question, I had to think about it like, and couldn't even find a thought to answer, literally. It would just be like, I feel this and I feel that and feelings, they fade. That's why I may have to marry you because his feelings can fade. Okay, that feeling for that mm -uh, could fade. Okay, listen, the birth of my destruction, because remember how I said I used weed as that comfort when he hit me like this, and I went home for a whole week until I went back, go, go get some money, and then from my parents or from my brother or something like that, and I'll go use the comfort blinding me for my purpose so that I can't call God. That's just like blinding me for my purpose. So I can't call on to Jesus. We cannot save ourselves, no matter how much we try. <laughs> okay, listen. So bonded out, he has to get bonded out, mind you, because he has a bad record. A bad record, bad. I never knew this. Here I am, no record. And, and and I'm getting a record. <laughs> so, right? All right. This is where destruction got birth. After that, this is where I had to go to court. I had to go to court and I skipped it. That was the worst thing ever. Everyone knows when you skip a court date, you sign up for a sentence that you don't even, you don't realize, all right? You don't want to see. You just, Rick Ross at this point, F it, you don't wanna go to court. But he got the money to just not go and just keep his behind out of jail, you know? So, except for me and us, lo and behold, we don't have that type of access or any access like that. <laughs> like that was just so demonic. Like any access, right, to like save us from that point. So after it came up to one, one warrant, right, under my name, and it was ultimately from this boy being around him not caring about myself remember my self worth weird out within the year it took a year for my self worth to be at this this until it was like this <clears throat> do y'all see that's how long it took a year for it to be like that and after it got like that, you start getting small. If they was, if this was smaller than small, it'd be tight, like nothing, like a dot, like, all right? So to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I, at this point I lose my apartment, right? My kids go, my parents and my kid, God gives them the um, opportunity to go get another place. And I'm not in that place. Like at this point, I'm living with my friend, I'm homeless. I'm with this boy. <laughs> now me and this boy still together. He just hasn't got out and just gonna be homeless together. <laughs> we just gonna be homeless together, right? Like in a different city or whatever. We just gonna be homeless together in a different city and we sleeping in people hallways. I went from having a job working 12 hour shifts wearing all the good things that made me feel good and being around my kids to not being around my kids, right? From smoking weed and doing all this stuff and thinking I found me a good boy 
that did not want to marry me, okay, didn't. Marriage is good, okay? Good in God's eyes, all right? And I was okay with that because, like I said, I felt like my daddy issue void was being, like, filled. Fulfilled. And I had a dad. I stabbed dad. I just didn't listen to him. Okay, because the enemy knows what we lack of in our mind, especially if we play it over and over and over in our head, like a jam or something. Like, oh, this is my jam. We playing it over and over in our head. And he's like, yeah, that's your jam. I'm gonna make it your worst day ever. Yeah. So that's exactly what he do it. That's what he did, right? So right. <laughs> now we homeless together, right? He's finding ways. Like now, this is the time I see as a provider. Because he trying, the devil trying to keep you in that hole. Like, you can't see. You in this hole. And you stay in this hole. For as long as I keep you in this hole. Because I want you in this hole. Now, God's given him this, this opportunity to do this. Because he know I'm going to call out to him. At a time where I need him. And I did. I'll get to that. Right? So, I'm like with this dude. And I'm actually watching with my own two eyes. After I lost my house. I done lost, lost my car. Because it got taken away, I let him drive it. <laughs> so, like, I done lost so much. Except for him. The pawn that the enemy wants to use in our faces, in our hearts and minds. Like, hey, this is, this is what I'm using. You know, a people, a person. Not a thing, a person. Your best friend, your, your crush your entanglement partner whoever as long as he ain't your husband and y'all didn't make a covenant under god he gonna use him and you're gonna be distracted to the point where you just gonna have to call out to god sooner or later you will call out to god right so here i am watching this man all of a sudden be this provider i've never now i've been going it's going on a year and a half like a year and two or three months right and i'm noticing he provided now for us to be living off of nothing yeah i said living off of nothing and here i am good for nothing with him like yeah baby i'm on for the ride ride to hell ride to destruction and we high now we going to the beach high we going to wherever high we just living a homeless high life and he don't care because at the same time, this person already lost their self-value. They don't respect their mother. They don't respect their father. They already messed up with God. You broke the commandment that he had made, the law. The law, okay? Satan already was having fun with his life, like tossing him, turning him. He didn't care about himself. He did little, he just was foolish okay and just like those that are watching free to nobody you're just fornicating and enemy will take it and use it something will happen you catch some or whatever is going to happen because you just not married there's no covenant okay and if you don't believe you just see okay so god is a god of full of surprises he will surprise you oh and he's very jealous very jealous god very jealous my father is jealous you trying to idle a boy and not him oh you see he will let the enemy use that boy to diminish you yes he will because who could save you from that diminish that diminish christ the person who died for us okay the only person that we we seem to ignore in this hateful world of sin some of us so right <laughs> turn into two horns because we end up getting into a fight somewhere else now, when you get into a fight, you go to jail or whatever, you're going to have to go to court. If you don't go to court to talk to them and tell them and for the judge to tell you, like, listen, you can't do this no more because you have to meet a judge. Just like when you die, you will meet a judge. Believe it or not. All right. So <laughs> it's just sadness because after the second war, it turns into a different war. And listen, we didn't have nowhere to go. So like I said, we're sleeping in the hallways in this city. We're um, sleeping not outside but in a laundry room in another city people will call us it would definitely be a trespassing charge if they would walk in and see that and that was us that was me and this boy but he had a big old thing full of weed made sure like 
What was that? What we gonna live in that? <laughs> what we gonna eat from that? <laughs> but we did say he was having fun. So until that very moment, right? Ain't gonna be nothing if I ain't with him because I already lost everything. That's where the enemy gets you at into that corner. He back you right up into that corner. Like, listen, you already lost this. You already you don't have this. You don't have that. So what you gonna do now? You might as well stay in it, bathe in it, live in it. It's so much better. I mean, look at me today. Proof. You don't have to bathe in it. Live in your failure and let the enemy bother you with your failure. You don't have to. If you just call on God, Jesus, remember, even demons bow down. Hell bow down to that powerful name. Okay? Listen, child. Child. If you just call on God for whatever you're feeling, and if you run your feelings by him, I promise you will feel so much better you'd be like why how come i just couldn't see this before it's the blindfold the enemy has that's his job he has a job just like anybody has a job to go to burger king and they have to work and serve and make orders just like you have a job to be a waitress just like you have a job to be a mayor or president he has his job to make our life suffering because what has he done suffer he suffered for his evil nasty sin and because he thinks his ways is better than God's ways. And listen, if you can listen or if you are listening, you are seeing, right, that your ways is not better than God's ways. Because right now you're feeling probably less than yourself or your happiness down in us. And that is the gifts that he gives us, patience. All those good gifts come from above. They don't, I mean, non-patientness, nasty mouths. Like you seem like you have to cut somebody out That's a just nasty spirit Yes, God loves you But that spirit ain't of him God just didn't walk about in the cool of the day In the garden of Eden Cussing Eve out for eating a fruit He said with your bruised heel That Satan has That the serpent has struck You will crush his head That means he, wait, he made women One man Remember how he opened his um he opens adam's rib and closed it and made woman woman okay woman to crush to be um adam's partner because that's what women are to men a help me okay god seen that adam wasn't good all on his own and he needed a help me that's where a woman came in and that's where the enemy got very upset at because here God's creating all this beautiful stuff. He comes in a snake in a garden and, and tells her to bite this apple. And <laughs> Eve, girl, we all, all of us women have a little bit of Eve in us. Okay, we are not perfect. <laughs> we is not perfect, sis. So, like, Eve only had one job. And listen, Eve, he didn't ask us, like, he didn't ask you to be organic, nothing, Eve. He just wanted you to not go to the tree and eat that apple. That's it. And I just want to know, was it good, Eve? Was it good? Because, listen, we had got pain through birth because of you, all this stuff. Like, you know, so even though Eve and the enemy, like, he got down in the trap. So he walked in the cool of the day. He didn't cuss her out, didn't pass her no blunt to kill her. <laughs> he said, he proclaimed something very good for us women, which is, you will be bruised. And with your bruised heel, you must crush Satan's head. You must make him out of a liar because he will come into your life like a snake. You won't see this, but he will come into your life. And the Bible said darkness will have its hour and there's nothing that heaven can do. Nothing. Because we have to call out to God. Jesus. So he, snipe, he, he allows the enemy and Eve becomes, you know, unblindfolded. She gets to see that he's naked and she's naked. And they do things together, right? So God makes it. He turns 
what the enemy felt was going to destroy Eve to her greater good. Because the enemy never has the last say so. He is not king. He is he doesn't even have keys to his own hell. Okay, God puts him there. And ultimately, God his will will be done on heaven, in heaven and on earth. Whether we like it or we don't, or we understand it, or we don't, or we see it, or we don't. It will be done. Done. Good and done. Okay? He's powerful than me. Definitely powerful than you. More powerful. Okay. So listen. And you know, clearly by a lot of actions in this ungrateful and evil world, which will disappear in the mist. So all the things that we could feel and touch upon and, and feel and all that stuff, it will be gone. It's just a mist. Because we are a mist. We were made from dust and when we go, we go. We don't come back. No, we don't come back for our belongings like oh my cup of coffee or something like that or my candle no we don't come back for that stuff we go on and it would determine where we go who our faith relied in rather for light in this world where the enemy walks about like a roaring lion looking for our mind to change our our will to change like the enemy can't even come up to you and kill you or harm you or hurt you unless you let him change your mind first. Your mind is what he battles for. He fights against God for your mind because he's trying to show God that he's the king. He's the greatest. He's No. God has the last say so on our lives. And you think you do, but you don't. Not, not even a little bit. <clears throat> not even a little bit. <laughs> So, he was in, we in a different third city. And in this third city, I get another warrant. Because here we, the fighting continues. We're going on two years now. Two years. Now, we fighting. We, we fighting like two MMA wrestlers. We fighting. And what we fighting for? Not love. Not prosperity. Not for our own place. Not for to be better people. We just fighting. Because the enemy just want to sit there and laugh like, oh, with his popcorn. Oh, look at them. Look at them thinking they doing something. God, do you see this? I told you they ain't worthy. I told you. How can you take some popcorn and enjoy the movie with me? A mock. That's all the enemy does is mock God. So that's why he, he, he was cast in a fiery pit. That's why he got cast out of heaven and down on earth. So that he can try to make God's creation hate him, which ain't going to really prevail at all. Unless we allow it. If we allow it, yes. If we allow to wake up every day and say, oh, well, I'm sad because of this. And I'm, and I'm depressed because of this. Or I don't feel good. Are you not happy that you are alive? Are you not happy that when this life is over in the mist, you will sit in a, in a room that God has prepared? Prepared for you? Do you, are you not happy? Do you not know how greater is thou? Do you not know that the enemy just wants to destroy, destroy you, kill you, and steal your joy? If he could just take your joy, have that person not call you that you know, that he knows that's gonna get on your nerve because they haven't called you. If he could just do that to get you out of your happy zone, out of your joy, he gonna do it. He gonna do it. Because that's his job, okay? Like we have jobs. Our job here on earth is to fight the enemy, to fight his kingdom, to fight all the evilness that he has risen up against us. We have to fight that, okay? So I'm going on to a third warrant. This is how my deliverance come in with that part. God delivered me so many times. I got so many stories. Some of y'all could relate, and most of y'all wouldn't. And I'm thanking Jesus for that. Because now you're learning through me that you don't got to relate. And you don't have to relate. Okay? So listen, right? I'm going on warrant number three. Now, he don't got no warrants. He goes to jail. He serves his time. I just sit outside waiting for him like a silly little girl with his weed, with his um, belongings, his little belongings he had, which was weed. <laughs> 
and wait for him. Wait for his father to come be his rescue. Wait for his mom to be his rescue. Because we all have a mom and dad who wants to rescue us from our own tragedies. That cannot happen. That doesn't even last for too long. To the point where he couldn't get rescued. He just had to sit there. So I'm feeling sad. And I got my own warrants now. I go. The devil leads me to somewhere where he knows that. Like Eve in the garden. He's telling me to go lead me somewhere where he can strike me again. So the cops come because I'm sitting in front of somebody's random property rolling a blunt because I'm so sad. The devil only takes you back down memory lane to make you do old destructive stuff. And he's making me feel like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm just rolling a blunt. Not even realizing cops could just roll up. <laughs> Weed is illegal in Connecticut. Um, <clears throat> illegal. Okay, so... He's allowing, like, realizing I'm just standing in the midst of my own troubles, just standing there because I'm high, I want to roll. <laughs> and it take two seconds, but listen, that two seconds can turn into your catastrophe. Catastrophe. And then the enemy just will be getting a good old laugh. But in that midst, God said he will turn, okay, because it will be his will be done. So after that, of course, they. Fit. I try to give them a fake name and everything. It almost worked because the enemy wanted it to work. Because any way he could have got me to just end myself with just smoking, 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 and being into the point, into the earth so bad to the point where I get something bad to smoke and I might not recover from that. Hmm. Hmm. And then, listen, if it's not heaven sent and the devil gave you that bag and yet it looked like weed, you don't know. Your eyes cannot see through it. You cannot, you don't know what you're about to inhale. Yeah, it tastes good. Your mind will be, with it. it will be shattered. Not fast, but slow. It will be real shattered. Oh, and your lungs already is just taking a big hit. It's already taking a big blow. It's already to just go. God's just keeping it. You know for a thread so that at least you could repent at least you could try to save yourself okay at least like anybody every sheep that he has to contain for his one sheep and if he brings you back from that evilness that the devil try to take you that darkness that God allowed that the devil has to do in your life it will be for your greater good and everlasting happiness you will always be happy after that because god has delivered you he has picked you up he got down in Eve's trap with her and told her you will step on serpents heads that is the gift god gives women women and we are ultimately a helpmate to any man that wants to open his eyes up to jesus because women are more mature than men it's just a scientific fact it just is a fact and hey that's why women fought for their rights back then and actually got it so listen right after i got served with the third warrant and i started rolling up a blunt and i started i didn't even get to smoke it so it was like god just smacked it out my hand type of crazy like it was just like crazy so after um, I wasn't going to see my kids for a while. Well, I didn't know because I'd never been to jail. I only went to a holding cell, not jail. In those times where me and him was in the back of a paddy wagon together, and he's trying to comfort me. Like, how could you comfort somebody you ultimately was fighting with and got arrested with? He didn't care. It was his, it was his ride, his journey to happiness. Because I guess that was the only place he felt at home in jail and that's how your mind will get you to a, a point like that because the enemy fights for our mind and that's just how how bad he wants us to think less of ourselves like we deserve a holding cell and that's the only place that we'll get some care and some love like no no so it's like right I'm finally in a jail after sitting in the court, sitting there sad, like a sad caged puppy with all the other women who knows where they were going for their evil deeds, and I'm not. I'm thinking, I'm not going there. I don't know. I never got in trouble going on work number three, different cities, okay? So I'm sitting there 
lo and behold, we all get in that nice old ride, that that cattle ride, back <laughs> back to the enemy's playground, jail, where he lurks and he sits, and that's his throne too. Because all these people in jail, they didn't do nothing good. They in jail for a reason. They in jail for a reason. Okay. And also, God do correct those he loves. So, God is in the jail cells, too. Okay, so the enemy thinking he's doing all this stuff. No, he ain't powerful. And that's why he's just mad. Because no matter what we do, God always gets down in that trap and he saves us. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. So, right? Now, I'm thinking that it's the worst time of my life. I'm sitting here crying, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God, my kids. Now I care. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> so I'm not high no more. I'm thinking about all this stuff. And I bet you when you're not high anymore, you think about what you have to think about. Proof that you're not in your right state of mind. You need to stop smoking. Okay? So, right? Be yourself. And watch good come to you. And peace come to you. Right? So... I'm like trying to sleep my pain away to the point where I'm like, I don't want to live. Now, he already, remember, God already took him away. He already in jail because this is the third warrant. We don't get in trouble. And I didn't go to court. He had to stay. Like, from court, from us both being, he went back to jail. He stayed there for God knows how long. How long. And then until we met up again, that's a whole different video. <laughs> it's levels to this. It is level so right and it's levels to the evilness that's who you need to rebuke his plots you need to rebuke his plans you need to arrest those evil thoughts right when you have them because if you can get in our minds just a little bit just a little bit he got us he got us because we're allowing our self-worth to diminish and be gone from us because we can't think about all the good things that God gave to us which is life and not death we are already sinners Jesus already died for us. That is the only gift. Like, if we don't have, we're not expecting anything else. The, the best gift we can have is life, to breathe air. And all the enemy wants us to do is just breathe in another air that's going to kill us eventually. Give us cancer eventually. And that's just what the enemy comes to do. Kill, steal, and destroy you. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. So, if he can even get you to listen to people that think they know God and, and you haven't read that Bible, oh, he's going to get you that way too. Because you're not elevating your mind, him personally. You have to have a personal, like, you know how that personal relationship you got with that person laying right next to you? If you don't have that personal relationship with God, listen, he's going to learn, he's going to use that person you laying next to. Okay? Because your personal relationship ain't even invented. You, you have it acknowledge you just let me let me um obey what i have to do here on earth even though it'll be gone when you're gone and then you go meet who you're supposed to meet the judge of life okay until he said i know you not because you never had a personal relationship with him your relationship was either based off of who you want other people to see you as, which is you cannot control the people's thoughts. They're going to think good or bad about you. You have, like, different versions of you in other people's heads. That's just life. You can't control that. You know, you don't know if Satan has their mind or they don't. You have to just love them regardless because that's what God do. God says be like him. Love like him. Slay demons like him, ladies and gents. Like, because the enemy just wants to kill us. And if, and if we holding guns, he gonna kill us with a gun. Okay? And if we holding out knives, we're walking down, listen, we gonna get stabbed eventually. Something gonna poke us because we, we're believing in that instead of who could really, like, I mean, if he stopped the enemy, the enemy who is the destroyer, the ultimate killer, the ultimate joy, the kill, the thief of joy comes like a thief in the night. If he could stop him, what makes you think, I mean, what make you think? He can't stop anything else that come your way like evil and stuff it's all in your head because there's a fight there's a war against your mind your soul belongs to your mind and your mind belongs to jesus you need to claim it every day you wake up 
Your children need to say every day you wake up, because mine do. And I'm happy with the results I get. Wouldn't you want yours to be the same? And wouldn't you want the same results for you if you have kids? If I would have known this before, and thank God I caught it, like, now. Thank you, Jesus. Because they're not grown. They ain't 14 going on, you know, 13 or 12 and not knowing who God is. And, and what and what's going to come and what his works is about you know so I'm thankful for that and honestly in that jail cell I was with four women and a woman handed me a bible that's where I received my breakthrough immediately as soon as wreck was called I'm way in a different like state too in jail there's only one there's only one prison in Connecticut, all right, for women, literally, and I received my breakthrough, and God came through like he always do, because that's what father we have, he always come through, so right, and he saved me, he gave me a book, he told me, like, if you open the book, it'll just start speaking to you, like I said in my last video, I don't gotta say too much, I go, I only need to say just what I need to say to get to to get through to that little part of you inside that needs to come out, which is our purpose in life. Okay, we gotta slay demons here, okay? We got evil rising up against us. And guess what? If you don't think you qualify, the the enemy already won. He already won. You know why? Because the blood of Jesus qualifies us for everything through him. People take that text very wrongly. Oh, I can do anything through Jesus Christ who strengthened me. Okay, you go see where that lands you at if you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, okay? That means you speak to him, no one's around, and he speaks to you, whether you're around people or you're not. All right, so if you don't have that, you're playing yourself. And that's me. By playing yourself, you're letting the enemy play you like a fiddle, like a flute. Okay, woo, 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 woo. he's playing you, literally playing you. So, if you don't have that relationship and you don't stay prayed up, that's what's just gonna happen. And that's really all I have to say on for today. And to my, just so that we can receive what God like how you know, and it's just it's just so much that you guys have to learn from my mistakes. So I have so much to tell you guys. This is just like a third video, I think. So, I'm not doing this for money or anything else. This is just to enlighten so many people that, hey, if you could, if I could do it, hey, you could do it. Okay, loves? Okay, I love you guys. Um, God bless you guys. And I hope you stay tuned for my next video because that too will be good. All right, so, oh, and with that story, let me finish a little bit. Start telling me to repent. So after I, we done been homeless, with, I haven't been homeless with this guy. We done stole from people, robbed people houses together. That's how he was providing, by the way. Like, I, it, was sad. it was sad because even when he had his own house, with his parents, he couldn't do this. So he was just breaking into old people's houses or whatever the case was going to be so that I won't leave him or we was just this mess together. And so that's what happened. God delivered me when I went to that cell because he needed to get us, to get me to myself. And if he has to get us to ourselves and it causes us to be lonely or whatever the case may be, so be it. God will have his way on earth and in heaven. And that's all I have to say today. And I want to thank you guys for watching my video. And stay tuned for the next one because it will be good. Okay, bye. God bless you guys.